In the year 2350, humanity had spread across the stars, colonizing planets and establishing a vast interstellar presence. On the fringes of known space, a deep space exploration vessel, the Intrepid, detected an unfamiliar signal emanating from an uncharted system. Captain Sarah Hayes, a seasoned explorer with a reputation for her keen intuition and unwavering resolve, ordered her crew to investigate. The signal was unlike anything the Intrepid had encountered before. It pulsed with a strange rhythm, defying any known patterns of communication or natural phenomena. As the crew worked to decode the signal, tension mounted. Weeks of deep space travel had taken a toll on everyone, and the possibility of discovering something entirely new reignited their curiosity and sense of adventure. Navigating through a dense asteroid field, the Intrepid finally arrived at the source of the signal. A massive structure floated in the void, shimmering with an ethereal light. It was an alien space station, unlike any design humanity had ever encountered. The station's architecture was a blend of sleek lines and organic curves, suggesting a civilization both technologically advanced and artistically inclined. Captain Hayes ordered a detailed scan of the station. The readings indicated life forms inside, but the technology was so advanced that it was difficult to discern specific details. Deciding to make contact, Hayes sent a standard greeting message, hoping to establish communication. To her surprise, the response came almost instantly, a series of complex symbols and sounds that the ship's AI began to analyze. Suddenly, the station's exterior shifted, revealing a docking bay. Taking a deep breath, Hayes gave the order to dock, knowing that this moment could mark a historic encounter. As the Intrepid locked onto the docking port, a boarding party was assembled, equipped with the best translation technology available and ready for any contingency. The airlock hissed open, revealing a group of tall, slender beings with shimmering skin that reflected the light in a myriad of colors. Their eyes, large and expressive, conveyed a mix of curiosity and caution. One of them stepped forward, making a series of hand gestures and vocal sounds. The Intrepid's AI translated, Welcome, humans. We are the Zandari. Why have you come? Captain Hayes, maintaining a calm and respectful demeanor, introduced herself and explained their mission of exploration and peace. The Zandari leader, whose name was translated as Valen, listened intently. After a brief pause, Valen responded, We have observed your kind. Your expansion concerns us. This territory is ours, and you must not encroach upon it. Hayes assured Valen that humanity had no intention of hostility, and suggested a dialogue to establish boundaries and cooperation. Valen's expression remained unreadable, and he simply said, We shall see. The Intrepid's crew returned to their ship, with Captain Hayes feeling a mixture of relief and unease. The initial contact had been tense but not overtly hostile. However, the Zandari's warning about human expansion lingered in her mind. As the crew analyzed the data collected from the station, they discovered more about the Zandari's technology and culture. The Zandari were a formidable civilization, with advancements in energy manipulation, biological augmentation, and space-time engineering far beyond human capabilities. Their society was structured around a strict hierarchy, with a ruling council overseeing all major decisions. It became clear that the Zandari viewed the uncharted system and its surrounding regions as their sovereign territory, a fact that posed a significant challenge for human expansion plans. Back on Earth, the United Earth Alliance received Captain Hayes's report with a mix of fascination and concern. The Council debated the best course of action, weighing the risks of potential conflict against the benefits of continued exploration. Ultimately, they decided to proceed with caution, emphasizing the importance of diplomacy. Captain Hayes was instructed to continue her mission while maintaining open communication with the Zandari. She sent a message to Valen, proposing a formal meeting to discuss terms of coexistence. Valen agreed, but with a stipulation. The meeting would take place on Zandari terms within their territory. The Intrepid navigated to the designated coordinates where a grand Zandari ship awaited them. The vessel was a marvel of engineering, its sleek, organic design contrasting sharply with human spacecraft. Captain Hayes, accompanied by a small delegation, boarded the Zandari ship, feeling the weight of the moment. 
The interior of the Zandari ship was even more awe-inspiring. Bioluminescent plants lined the corridors, providing soft ambient light. The air was filled with a subtle, calming fragrance, and the walls seemed to pulse with a gentle energy. Valen greeted them in a grand chamber, surrounded by other Zandari officials. The meeting began with formal introductions and exchanges of cultural artifacts, a gesture of goodwill. Hayes presented Valen with a piece of art from Earth, a symbol of humanity's creativity and desire for peace. Valen reciprocated with a delicate crystal that emitted a soothing hum, representing Zandari harmony and balance. However, as discussions progressed, it became clear that the Zandari were deeply distrustful of human intentions. They viewed humanity's rapid expansion as a threat, fearing that it would disrupt the delicate balance they had maintained in their region of space. Valen's tone grew more assertive, demanding strict limitations on human activity in Zandari-claimed territories. Captain Hayes, understanding the gravity of the situation, attempted to negotiate terms that would allow for peaceful coexistence. She proposed joint exploration missions and technological exchanges to foster mutual understanding and cooperation. But Valen remained skeptical, insisting on more restrictive measures. The tension in the room was palpable. Both sides were determined to protect their interests, and the prospect of a peaceful resolution seemed increasingly remote. As the meeting adjourned, Valen issued a final warning. Any further human encroachment would be met with force. Captain Sarah Hayes and the crew of the Intrepid remained on high alert following their tense meeting with the Zandari. As they continued their exploration mission within the uncharted system, they were acutely aware of the potential for conflict. It wasn't long before their fears were realized. A few days after the meeting, the Intrepid detected multiple Zandari vessels approaching their position at high speed. The Zandari ships were sleek and menacing, their energy signatures indicating advanced weaponry. Captain Hayes immediately ordered defensive maneuvers and called for battle stations. The Zandari ships opened fire without warning, their energy weapons slicing through the void with deadly precision. The Intrepid returned fire, its laser cannons blazing as it dodged and weaved through the onslaught. Despite being outnumbered, the Intrepid's advanced shields and hull integrity allowed it to withstand the initial barrage. Lieutenant Marcus Blake, the ship's tactical officer, executed a series of brilliant evasive maneuvers, exploiting the asteroid field to their advantage. The crew's coordination and quick thinking allowed them to inflict significant damage on the Zandari ships, even managing to disable one of them. The battle raged on, with both sides exchanging devastating blows. The Intrepid's crew fought valiantly, showcasing humanity's tactical ingenuity and resilience. Captain Hayes directed her crew with calm determination, her leadership inspiring them to push beyond their limits. As the skirmish reached its climax, a particularly well-aimed shot from the Intrepid's main cannon struck a critical point on one of the Zandari vessels, causing it to explode in a brilliant flash of light. The remaining Zandari ships, realizing they were at a disadvantage, began to retreat. Captain Hayes ordered her crew to cease fire and let the Zandari withdraw. The Intrepid had held its own against a formidable enemy, but the encounter had confirmed that the Zandari were not bluffing in their threats. The skirmish marked the beginning of what was sure to be a prolonged and bitter conflict. News of the skirmish at the fringe spread quickly through human space, reaching the United Earth Alliance with alarming speed. The Council convened an emergency session to address the growing threat posed by the Zandari. The skirmish had proven that the Zandari were not only technologically advanced, but also willing to use force to assert their dominance. Admiral James Reynolds, a seasoned military leader known for his strategic brilliance, was appointed to lead the defense against the Zandari. His first task was to assemble a fleet capable of countering the Zandari threat. The call went out across human space, summoning the best and brightest to join the effort. Admiral Reynolds' command center buzzed with activity as officers and strategists gathered to formulate a plan. The fleet was to be a mix of experienced warships and newly commissioned vessels, equipped with the latest technology and weaponry. Engineers worked around the clock to retrofit ships with improved shields and advanced weapon systems. Captain Hayes and the crew of the Intrepid were among the first to be integrated into the new fleet. 
Their first-hand experience with the Zandari made them invaluable assets in the coming conflict. Hayes was promoted to Commodore, tasked with leading a squadron within the fleet. As preparations intensified, intelligence agents worked tirelessly to gather information about the Zandari. Their efforts led to several breakthroughs, revealing critical details about Zandari's ship design, tactics, and strategic weaknesses. This information was crucial in developing effective countermeasures and tactics. The fleet's training exercises were rigorous and relentless. Simulated battles against Zandari ships tested the crew's limits, honing their skills and coordination. Admiral Reynolds emphasized the importance of unity and adaptability, knowing that these qualities would be essential in facing an enemy as formidable as the Zandari. Diplomatic channels were also explored, with envoys reaching out to potential allies among other alien races who had grievances against the Zandari. These efforts bore fruit as several species agreed to join humanity's cause, providing additional ships and resources to bolster the fleet. Finally, after months of intense preparation, the fleet was ready. The ships, now fully equipped and crewed, assembled at a staging point near the front lines. Admiral Reynolds addressed the assembled fleet, his voice carrying a tone of resolve and determination. Today we stand on the brink of a great challenge, Reynolds declared. The Zandari believe they can intimidate us, that their superior technology and ruthlessness will bring us to our knees. They are wrong. We will show them the strength and spirit of humanity. We fight not just for our survival, but for our right to explore and thrive among the stars. Together, we will prevail. The fleet, led by Admiral James Reynolds, received intelligence that the Zandari were amassing forces near the strategically vital Epsilon Eridani system. This star system, with its abundant resources and key position on major trade routes, was critical for both sides. Admiral Reynolds decided to make a stand there, determined to halt the Zandari advance. The human fleet arrived in the Epsilon Eridani system and quickly established defensive positions around its key planets and asteroid belts. The Zandari fleet, larger and more heavily armed, entered the system shortly thereafter their ships shimmering ominously against the backdrop of the stars. As the two fleets squared off, tension hung heavy in the void. The silence of space was shattered by the opening salvo from the Zandari, their energy beams slicing through the darkness. Human ships responded in kind, their lasers and missiles streaking towards the enemy. Admiral Reynolds directed the fleet with precision employing tactics designed to exploit the intelligence gathered about the Zandari. He ordered smaller, more agile ships to flank the Zandari formation, disrupting their cohesion and creating opportunities for the larger human warships to strike critical blows. Commodore Sarah Hayes, commanding her squadron from the bridge of the Intrepid, led daring raids into the heart of the Zandari fleet. Her ships executed hit-and-run attacks, targeting vulnerable points and then retreating before the Zandari could mount a coordinated counterattack. Her audacity and tactical brilliance inspired those around her, turning the tide in several key engagements. The battle raged on for hours, with both sides suffering heavy losses. The Zandari's superior firepower was offset by the human fleet's adaptability and innovative tactics. In the chaos of battle, Captain Elena Ortega of the Resolute devised a risky maneuver to exploit a weakness in the Zandari formation. Her ship and its escorts penetrated deep into enemy lines, targeting the flagship of the Zandari commander. The daring attack succeeded, causing the Zandari flagship to erupt in a catastrophic explosion. The loss of their flagship threw the Zandari forces into disarray, and Admiral Reynolds seized the moment. He ordered an all-out assault, and the human fleet pressed their advantage with relentless ferocity. By the time the dust settled, the human fleet had emerged victorious. The Zandari forces were decimated, their remnants retreating in disarray. The Battle of Epsilon Eridani marked a significant victory for humanity, demonstrating their ability to stand against a seemingly superior foe. In the aftermath of their defeat at Epsilon Eridani, the Zandari were humiliated and enraged. Their ruling council, desperate to reclaim their lost honor and territory, ordered a massive counteroffensive. The Zandari fleet, 
reinforced with additional ships and the latest weaponry, launched a series of attacks on key human colonies and outposts. The first target was the colony on New Horizons, a thriving world known for its rich mineral deposits. The Zandari struck without warning, their ships descending on the colony like a swarm of locusts. The defenders, though brave, were overwhelmed by the sheer ferocity and numbers of the Zandari attack. As reports of the attack reached Admiral Reynolds, he realized the gravity of the situation. The Zandari were intent on breaking human morale by striking at their most vulnerable points. Reynolds quickly redeployed his forces, sending reinforcements to the threatened colonies while maintaining a strong defensive posture in key systems. Despite these efforts, the Zandari continued their relentless assault. The colonies on Vega Prime and Aurora Station were hit next, suffering heavy casualties and extensive damage. The Zandari employed terror tactics, targeting civilian populations to sow fear and chaos. Stories of Zandari atrocities spread rapidly, fueling a burning desire for vengeance among the human populace. On the front line, Commodore Hayes and her squadron were engaged in a desperate struggle to defend Aurora Station. The battle was fierce, with the Zandari employing new and deadly weapons. Hayes's tactical acumen was put to the test as she maneuvered her ships to protect the station while inflicting maximum damage on the attackers. Lieutenant Aiden Cross, a rising star in the fleet, played a crucial role in the defense. Piloting a heavily armed gunship, he led a squadron of fighters in daring strikes against the Zandari, buying precious time for the station's evacuation. His bravery and skill inspired his comrades, and his actions turned the tide in several critical skirmishes. Despite these heroic efforts, the cost of the counteroffensive was high. Human forces were stretched thin, and resources were becoming scarce. The Zandari, though suffering losses of their own, seemed determined to press their advantage. Admiral Reynolds knew that the only way to stop the Zandari was to strike at their heart. But for now, the priority was to defend and stabilize the front lines. As the Zandari counteroffensive raged on, the resolve of humanity was tested like never before. The flames of war burned brightly, and both sides braced for the battles yet to come. The ongoing Zandari counteroffensive had put humanity on the defensive, straining their resources and morale. In response, the United Earth Alliance decided that they needed to gain a strategic advantage. Intelligence gathering became a top priority, and a daring mission was planned to infiltrate a Zandari stronghold. Agent Maya Chen, a seasoned operative with a reputation for getting results, was selected to lead the mission. Chen assembled a team of elite agents each with specialized skills in espionage, combat, and technology. Their objective was to infiltrate a Zandari command center located on a moon deep within Zandari-controlled space and extract critical intelligence about their military plans. The team boarded a stealth ship, the Shadow Dancer, and embarked on their perilous journey. Navigating through Zandari patrols and automated defenses required all of Chen's skill and ingenuity. Upon reaching the moon, they used advanced cloaking technology to land undetected near the command center. Under the cover of darkness, the team infiltrated the facility. The Zandari command center was a labyrinth of corridors and heavily guarded rooms. Using holographic disguises and advanced hacking tools, the agents moved swiftly and silently, avoiding detection as they made their way to the central database. Once inside the main data vault, the team encountered sophisticated security measures. Specialist Ravi Patel, the team's tech expert, worked quickly to bypass the encryption and firewalls. Meanwhile, Chen and the others stood guard, ready to fend off any patrols that might discover their presence. After tense moments of cracking codes and dodging patrols, Patel successfully accessed the database. The team downloaded a trove of vital information, including detailed plans for upcoming Zandari offensives and locations of key military installations. However, their intrusion did not go unnoticed for long. Alarms blared as Zandari security forces converged on their position. A fierce firefight erupted as the team fought their way out of the facility. Chen's leadership and the team's training proved invaluable as they navigated the treacherous escape route. Despite the overwhelming odds, they managed to reach their extraction point and board the Shadow Dancer 
With the Zandari in hot pursuit, they activated the ship's stealth systems and slipped away into the void. Returning to human space, the team delivered the critical intelligence to Admiral Reynolds. The data provided a significant advantage, revealing the Zandari's strategic weaknesses and upcoming plans. This newfound knowledge enabled the human fleet to prepare for and counter the Zandari's next moves more effectively. Armed with the intelligence gathered by Agent Chen and her team, Admiral Reynolds and his strategists devised a bold plan to turn the tide of the war. The data revealed that the Zandari were planning a massive assault on the human-controlled Hades Cluster, a group of strategically important star systems. Reynolds decided to set a trap, using the element of surprise to their advantage. The human fleet moved into position, laying in wait in the Hades Cluster. The ships were strategically hidden within asteroid fields and nebulae their energy signatures masked to avoid detection. As the Zandari fleet approached, they were unaware of the ambush awaiting them. When the Zandari launched their assault, the human fleet sprang into action. Emerging from their hidden positions, human ships struck with devastating precision. The Zandari were caught off guard, their formations thrown into disarray. Commodore Hayes led her squadron in a series of daring attacks, targeting the Zandari command ships and disrupting their coordination. The initial strikes crippled several key Zandari vessels, including their flagship. Admiral Reynolds, commanding from the battleship Vanguard, ordered a full-scale assault. The human fleet pressed their advantage, pouring relentless firepower into the heart of the Zandari forces. Captain Elena Ortega of the Resolute spearheaded an attack on the Zandari's primary weapons platform, a massive ship capable of unleashing catastrophic energy blasts. Ortega's ship and its escorts managed to breach the platform's defenses and deliver a crippling blow, neutralizing its threat. The Zandari, reeling from the unexpected ferocity of the human attack, attempted to regroup and mount a counteroffensive. However, the combination of superior tactics, the element of surprise, and the precise execution of the human fleet proved overwhelming. The Zandari lines broke and their ships began to retreat in a desperate bid to escape the onslaught. The victory at the Hades Cluster was decisive. The Zandari fleet suffered devastating losses, with many of their ships destroyed or captured. The human fleet emerged victorious, their morale bolstered by the successful ambush. This battle marked a significant turning point in the war, shifting the momentum in humanity's favor. One of the key envoys, Ambassador Leora Vasquez, traveled to the Elorian Confederation, a collective of species known for their advanced biotechnology and wisdom. The Elorians had long resisted Zandari aggression, their peaceful nature making them a target for the warlike Zandari. Vasquez's mission was to persuade the Elorians to join forces with humanity. The Elorian homeworld, Eloria, was a lush, vibrant planet teeming with life. Ambassador Vasquez was received in the Grand Council Chamber a beautiful structure made of living, bioluminescent plants. The Elorian Council, composed of representatives from various species within the Confederation, listened intently as Vasquez presented her case. Together, we can stand against the Zandari oppression and secure a future of peace and cooperation, Vasquez implored. Humanity has proven its resilience and strength in battle, and with your support, we can turn the tide definitively. The Elorian Council debated the proposal, weighing the risks and benefits. High Elder Thilaris, a wise and respected leader, spoke passionately in favor of the Alliance. The Zandari have brought nothing but suffering. An alliance with humanity offers hope and the possibility of a brighter future. After intense deliberation, the Elorian Council agreed to join the United Earth Alliance. Their advanced medical technology and bioengineering capabilities provided a significant boost to the human war effort. The partnership also brought in other allied races within the Confederation, expanding the coalition against the Zandari. Simultaneously, other human envoys secured alliances with the Qataran Republic and the Volkari Nomads, two powerful factions with grievances against the Zandari. The Qatarans, known for their formidable warriors and strategic acumen, committed their fleets to the cause. The Volcari, masters of guerrilla warfare and deep space operations, 
offered their expertise in unconventional tactics. With these new alliances, humanity's position strengthened significantly. The combined forces of the coalition prepared for a coordinated campaign to take the fight to the Zandari. Joint training exercises and strategic planning sessions fostered unity and cooperation among the diverse species. The United Earth Alliance, bolstered by its new allies, set its sights on the ultimate objective, Zandari Prime, the homeworld of their adversaries. The fall of Zandari Prime would not only cripple the Zandari war effort, but also symbolize the end of their oppressive regime. Admiral Reynolds, now leading a formidable coalition fleet, planned a multi-pronged assault on Zandari Prime. The operation would involve simultaneous attacks on key defensive outposts and infrastructure, followed by a direct strike on the planet itself. The plan was ambitious and fraught with peril, but the stakes were too high for anything less. The coalition fleet arrived at the outskirts of the Zandari system, encountering heavy resistance from Zandari defense fleets. The battle to breach the outer defenses was intense, with waves of enemy ships launching relentless attacks. Commodore Hayes, leading the vanguard, executed daring maneuvers to break through the enemy lines, her ships weaving through the chaos with precision. The coordinated assault by the coalition forces overwhelmed the Zandari defenses, allowing the main fleet to push forward towards Zandari Prime. The sight of the enemy's homeworld filled the viewscreens, a stark reminder of the challenge that lay ahead. Zandari Prime was heavily fortified, its orbit littered with defense platforms and warships. The coalition launched a full-scale siege, targeting the defense platforms and engaging the Zandari fleet in a brutal contest of firepower and strategy. Captain Elena Ortega and her squadron played a crucial role, using their knowledge of Zandari tactics to exploit weaknesses and create openings for the larger ships to strike. On the surface of Zandari Prime, elite ground forces from humanity and its allies prepared for planetary assault. Specialized teams, including soldiers from the Elorian and Kataran forces, were deployed to disable planetary defenses and secure key infrastructure. The ground battle was fierce, with the Zandari defending their home with desperate resolve. In the midst of the siege, Lieutenant Aiden Cross led a commando unit in a daring mission to capture the Zandari High Command. The team infiltrated the capital city, navigating through the war-torn streets and battling Zandari soldiers to reach the command center. Their objective was to capture or eliminate the Zandari leadership, a move that would demoralize the enemy and expedite the fall of Zandari Prime. The mission was a success. Cross and his team breached the heavily guarded command center, capturing key members of the Zandari ruling council. The news of their capture spread quickly, causing chaos and confusion among the Zandari forces. With their leadership compromised and defenses crumbling, the remaining Zandari resistance began to falter. The coalition forces pressed their advantage, and after days of relentless fighting, the defenders of Zandari Prime were finally overwhelmed. The planet fell to the coalition, marking a decisive victory. In the wake of the fall of Zandari Prime, the remnants of the Zandari military regrouped for a desperate final stand. Their forces, though battered and demoralized, were still formidable. They retreated to their last stronghold, a heavily fortified star system known as the Nexus Cluster. Here, the Zandari had built a network of defense stations and weapon platforms, making it a nearly impregnable fortress. Admiral James Reynolds, sensing that this was the final opportunity to end the war, ordered the coalition fleet to prepare for an all-out assault on the Nexus Cluster. The battle plan involved a multi-vector attack combining direct assaults with covert operations to dismantle the Zandari defenses from within. As the coalition fleet arrived at the Nexus Cluster, they were met with a wall of firepower. Zandari warships and defense platforms unleashed a barrage of energy beams and missiles, creating a deadly gauntlet. The coalition fleet, undeterred, pressed forward, their ships weaving through the intense crossfire with expert precision. Commodore Sarah Hayes, commanding her squadron from the bridge of the Intrepid, led the charge into the heart of the Zandari defenses. Her ships executed daring maneuvers, dodging enemy fire while delivering punishing blows to the Zandari vessels. 
The coordination and discipline of the coalition forces began to show as they systematically dismantled the outer defenses of the Nexus cluster. Meanwhile, a special operations team led by Lieutenant Aiden Cross undertook a critical mission to disable the Nexus cluster's primary defense grid. Using stealth ships, the team infiltrated the cluster, landing on a key defense station. They faced fierce resistance from Zandari soldiers, but Cross's leadership and tactical prowess enabled them to push through. As Cross and his team planted explosives and hacked into the station's control systems, the main fleet continued their assault. Captain Elena Ortega and her squadron provided crucial support, targeting key installations and creating opportunities for the larger capital ships to advance. The battle reached its climax as the special operations team succeeded in disabling the defense grid. The coalition fleet, seizing the moment, launched a massive coordinated attack on the central command station of the Nexus cluster. The combined firepower of the fleet overwhelmed the Zandari defenses, leading to the destruction of the command station in a spectacular explosion. The remaining Zandari forces, now leaderless and disorganized, were quickly subdued. The Nexus cluster fell to the coalition, marking the end of organized Zandari resistance. The final stand of the Zandari was over, and humanity, along with its allies, had emerged victorious. The triumph at the Nexus cluster sent shockwaves throughout the galaxy. The Zandari, once a feared and dominant power, were now shattered. The coalition's victory was celebrated far and wide, but the cost of the war was keenly felt. Many lives had been lost, and entire worlds had been scarred by the conflict. In the aftermath, the United Earth Alliance and its allies turned their attention to the remnants of the Zandari regime. The captured leaders of the Zandari were brought to trial for their war crimes. The trials were held on the newly liberated Zandari Prime, symbolizing justice being served on the very soil where the oppression had originated. High Elder Thalaris of the Elorian Confederation, a key ally in the war, presided over the trials alongside human judges. The proceedings were broadcast across the galaxy, a powerful reminder of the consequences of tyranny and aggression. The Zandari leaders, stripped of their power and influence, faced the consequences of their actions. Amid the celebrations and the trials, efforts began to rebuild the war-torn regions. The coalition focused on humanitarian aid and reconstruction, helping displaced populations and restoring infrastructure. The Elorians, with their advanced biotechnology, played a significant role in healing the environmental damage caused by the war. Admiral Reynolds, hailed as a hero, oversaw the transition from wartime operations to peacekeeping and reconstruction. He worked closely with representatives from the Qataran Republic and the Volcari Nomads to ensure that the newly established peace would be lasting and secure. Commodore Hayes and Captain Ortega continued to serve with distinction, leading missions to stabilize the liberated regions and ensure that the Zandari remnants did not regroup. Their efforts were crucial in maintaining the fragile peace and preventing any resurgence of hostilities. As the galaxy began to heal, the coalition members formalized their alliances into a new interstellar federation. This federation, built on the principles of mutual respect and cooperation, aimed to prevent future conflicts and promote prosperity among its member civilizations. Humanity's role in the federation was pivotal. The war had showcased their resilience, ingenuity, and commitment to justice. These qualities earned them respect and admiration from their allies solidifying their leadership role in the new galactic order. The victory over the Zandari was not just a military triumph, but also a moral one. It demonstrated that even the most formidable adversaries could be overcome through unity, courage, and determination. The coalition's success set a precedent for how diverse civilizations could work together to achieve common goals. With the war against the Zandari concluded, the galaxy faced the monumental task of rebuilding and ensuring lasting peace. The United Earth Alliance, along with its newly formed Interstellar Federation, initiated extensive reconstruction projects across the war-torn regions. On Zandari Prime, efforts to rehabilitate the planet were underway. The once thriving world had been left in ruins by the final siege. 
teams of engineers, scientists, and volunteers from various allied species work together to restore infrastructure, clean up environmental damage, and rebuild communities. The Elorians, with their advanced biotechnological expertise, played a crucial role in healing the planet's ecosystem. Admiral Reynolds led a delegation to oversee the integration of the remaining Zandari population into the New Order. The Zandari, humbled by their defeat, faced the challenge of adapting to a new reality. Many among them were willing to cooperate, eager to move past the war and build a future of peace. Programs were established to facilitate cultural exchange and mutual understanding, aiming to bridge the gap between the Zandari and their former enemies. In the newly formed Federation Council, representatives from all member civilizations gathered to draft a charter that would govern their alliance. The document emphasized principles of equality, mutual respect, and peaceful coexistence. It also included provisions for conflict resolution, ensuring that future disputes would be settled through diplomacy rather than warfare. High Elder Thalaris and Ambassador Leora Vasquez played pivotal roles in these negotiations, their wisdom and diplomatic acumen guiding the discussions. The Council sessions were often long and challenging but the shared vision of a united galaxy kept the delegates focused. The final charter was a testament to the resilience and determination of the allied species, marking a new chapter in interstellar relations. Meanwhile, Commodore Sarah Hayes and Captain Elena Ortega continued their efforts to secure and stabilize the liberated regions. They led missions to root out remaining pockets of Zandari resistance, ensuring that no remnants could threaten the fragile peace. Their leadership and bravery were instrumental in maintaining order and protecting the rebuilding efforts. Lieutenant Aidan Cross, now a celebrated hero, transitioned to a role in the Federation's Security Council. His first-hand experience in the war provided invaluable insights into developing strategies for defending the newly established peace. Cross also spearheaded initiatives to train a new generation of peacekeepers ensuring that the lessons learned from the war would be passed on.